Welcome to Puzzles and Solutions. The Mensa Norway IQ test is one of the most popular IQ tests on the internet with over 3.1 million attempts since the release of the IQ test. You would assume that with this many people taking the test, every puzzle should have an explanation for it somewhere on the internet. However, while searching, I couldn't find a single good explanation for the old puzzle 31. This is the old puzzle 31. The puzzle consists of a matrix where there is three colored squares in every picture. If you want to, you can pause the video here and try to solve the puzzle by yourself. When I first encountered the puzzle back in February, I spent roughly two hours trying to find some solution to solve the puzzle. After wasting two hours of my life without any sort of solution, I decided to check the internet for an explanation. The first search result I found on Puzzle 31 was a post on the Puzzling Stack Exchange. The post made by someone named Francesco said the following. I have tried to solve this question, exercise 31, in many ways, but I couldn't figure out the logic behind this. Now, at the time, I was in the exact same situation of not finding any logic behind this puzzle, and my hope was that there would be some comment which could explain the puzzle in a very simple way, such that I could finally get over this stupid puzzle. The most upvoted comment at the time was the following. Treat the triples as vectors over a set with element black, white, and striped, the vectors in the two first rows are added with some non-commutative binary operation which produces the third row as a result. At first, I had no idea what a non-commutative binary operation was, and I'm sure that there are plenty of people who doesn't understand what the vector part means either. The vector part means that when we add pictures together, we add the squares which are in the same position. For example, if you go by the first column, we add the middle square of the first picture with the middle square of the second picture to produce the middle square of the third picture. The same would go for left square plus left square equaling left square and right square plus right square equaling right square. The non-commutative binary operation part means that the order of how we add the squares matter for what result we get. For example, white plus black does not equal black plus white. We can see that this is true if we look at the left squares of the second column. Here we have that black plus white equals striped, while in the middle squares of the first column we have that white plus black equals white. So black plus white equals striped, while white plus black equals white. Meaning that black plus white does not equal white plus black. The rest of the comment explains how we can solve the puzzle using this method. Basically, if we look at the third column, we have two additions to figure out. Firstly, we have what white plus striped equals, and secondly, we have what striped plus striped equals. If we look at the left squares of the first column, we see that striped plus striped equals white. So the second equation we had to figure out is striped plus striped equals white. This addition is for the middle square of the third column, meaning that the answer will have a white middle square. The only answers with a white middle square is answer B, D, and E. Now if we look further at the third column, we have the same addition of white plus striped, both in the left squares and the right squares. This means that the answer will have the same color in the left and right square. Out of the three answers left, only answer D has the same color in the left and the right square answer D is the correct solution. Now, is this a valid way of solving the puzzle? The comment specifically mentions that this addition is for the columns only, but let's look at the rows. In the right square of the first row, we have that black plus black equals white, and in the middle square of the second row, we have that black plus black equals striped. This means that black plus black does not equal black plus black, which is a contradiction to any sort of an addition puzzle. Because of this, we know that the puzzle is not an addition puzzle in the rows. Now, you might think that knowing that the puzzle is not an addition puzzle in the rows is useless to know because the comment specifically states that we have addition in the columns. The only problem is that this is a Mensa addition puzzle and every Mensa addition puzzle so far has had the same rules in the rows and in the columns. Because of this, we can extend the proof of this not being an addition puzzle in the rows to the columns, meaning that this way of solving the puzzle is not correct. After I found the first comment invalid, I took a look at the second comment. Before I read the comment, I would just like to mention that these comments were based on an even older version of the puzzle. The only difference is that in the older version, the answers looked like this. So when the comment mentions answer A, he is talking about the black striped striped option and not the black 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 option. The comment says the following. A. There are 9 white squares, 3 in the right position, 3 in the middle, and 3 in the left spot. There are 10 striped squares, 4 on the left. 3 in the middle and 3 on the right. There are 5 black squares, 1 left, 2 middle, 2 right. Option A would give you 6 black squares, 2 in each position, 9 white squares, 3 in each position, and 12 striped squares, 4 in each position. 
First of all, let's look at the logic behind this solution. The logic is that if the puzzle has this very specific symmetry, then answer A is correct. The puzzle has this very specific symmetry, answer A is correct. Now, the problem with the logic is the assumption that the puzzle has this very specific symmetry. There is zero evidence in the puzzle itself indicating this symmetry. Therefore, the solution is invalid. After this comment, I just kept reading comment after comment, both on Stack Exchange and on other sites, but in the end, I just found that every comment was invalid. So at this point, if I wanted a solution for the puzzle, I would have to make it myself. The first thing I knew was that answer A was different in the older version of the test. Since the puzzle itself was identical, I could eliminate answer A. All the other answers are identical, so I can't eliminate any other answers using this method. Now, my thought at the time was that the white and the striped squares follow an easy and predictable pattern, but in order to make it a hard puzzle, the creator of the test put all these black squares on top of the white and the striped squares to hide the pattern. So since the black squares represent incomplete information, we can simply remove them. Looking at this picture, the only pattern I found was on the diagonals from the top left to bottom right. Let's go over the diagonals one by one. In the blue diagonal, we have these pictures. Notice how the first picture is the opposite of the third picture. Also the known squares of the second picture is identical to the third picture. So the blue diagonal follow the pattern of inverse same same. Next, looking at the green diagonal, we see that the third picture is the opposite of the second picture. Also the known squares of this first picture is identical to the second picture. So the green diagonal follows the pattern of same same inverse. And finally, looking at the red diagonal, we are missing one picture, so we can't tell if the red diagonal follows the pattern of inverse same same or same inverse same. Looking at the bigger picture, we can see that the inverse pictures are in the main diagonal from the top right to the bottom left. Therefore, the red diagonal should follow the pattern of same inverse same. To solve the puzzle, we focus on the red diagonal. The answer will have the same left square as the first picture, so it will be striped. The middle square will also be the same as in the first picture, so it will be white. And the right square will be the opposite of the right square in the second picture, so it will be striped. Looking at the answers, we can eliminate answer C because it has a striped square in the middle, answer E because it has a white square on the right, and answer F because it has both a white square on the left and the right. Now, the issue is that the black squares represent incomplete information, and therefore we can't know if the right square in answer B is striped or not, so we can't conclude if answer B or answer D is the correct answer. Now, my next idea was to add the black squares back in and try to find some predictable pattern for the black squares, but it was impossible to find one. I thought that my method was valid and the answer was either answer B or answer D, but I couldn't figure out which one it was specifically. This is where I decided to just put the puzzle on the shelf and give up on it. Many months later. While taking a short break from exam reading, I decided to check the channel's comments and I found two very interesting comments. The first comment from Hendix1706 said, A guy named Malkinki on YouTube published the real solution yesterday and it made me feel so stupid. It was there for everyone to be seen. The comment is talking about puzzle 31 and I got very excited for the possibility of having an explanation for this puzzle. The second comment was from someone Norwegian named No, I don't want a name and it said the following. Great video, your explanation is straight to the point and presented in a way that is easy to follow. I always enjoy watching people solving and explaining the test I have designed. I also like the visual impression of your channel in general. Now, it was a very nice comment but the important part was that he claimed to have designed the Mensa Norway IQ test. This meant that I could get the official way of solving Puzzle 31 and any other question I had about the IQ test. First, let's go through Malkinki's explanation of the puzzle. Just a small note before starting his explanation, he listened to my explanation of the puzzle before creating his explanation, so when he is talking about the diagonal thing being right, that is what he means. Okay, this is exercise 31. First things first, the diagonal thing is correct, but you have to do it in the other side, from top right to bottom left. The center squares regularly switch between black and white, left and right squares are uh, retaining their content, and the striped squares are hiding the content and they have a regular pattern. And the striped squares have a regular arrangement, but the only rule is that there are no repetition with them, and they just hide the content. The answer is B. The blue diagonal keeps the initial black on the right and switches the previous black center to a white one. I will leave the link to the full 5 minute video in the description if you want to watch it. 
So he thinks that there is this pattern of the black and the white squares, but considering that the puzzle would be way too easy, the creator added these striped squares on top to make it harder. Now his assumption is way better than mine, because if we look at the Mensal New Zealand IQ test, we see that the striped squares are used to hide the information in matrices. Therefore, it's a fair assumption that Mensa would use striped squares to hide information in general. Starting off, we can remove the striped squares. Now, here already is my first problem with this explanation. The striped squares are in total 42% of the squares of the puzzle, meaning that most of the information is removed. Now, further, we know that the pattern is on the diagonal from the top right to bottom left. So we need at least two squares in the same diagonal and position to give any indication of this pattern being true. Now we can remove even more squares which do not provide any support to the pattern. These are all the squares that he based his pattern on. It's only 10 out of 24 squares. I'm not sure if this is enough information to base a pattern on. Looking at it, it feels like there is way too little information and most of it is in one diagonal. But let's assume that the pattern is true for now. The pattern is that the left and right squares maintain their color, while the middle square alternates between black and white. Adding the other squares back in and focusing on the diagonal which the answer is in, we can see that the left and the right square will be the same color as the first picture, so they will both be black, while the middle square will be the opposite of the middle square in the second picture, so it will be white. Therefore the answer will be black, white, black. Answer A has a black middle and cannot be correct. Answer C has a white right square and cannot be correct. Answer E has a white right and cannot be correct. And answer F has everything wrong and cannot be correct. This leaves us with either answer B or answer D as the correct solution. Now, in order to figure out which one of these are correct, we have to figure out the pattern of the striped squares. Malkinki says that in any diagonal, there cannot be a repeat of a striped square pattern, and therefore answer B is correct. Now, personally, I feel like this final reasoning is bad. First of all, it's very arbitrary to view the puzzle in this specific way. And secondly, if you do the probability calculations, this pattern has a 52.5% probability of being true by random chance, meaning that it's highly likely that the pattern is just random noise, which should be ignored. Even though I feel like the last part is flawed, I still think it's a good attempt at trying to solve the puzzle. Now, going back to the conversation between me and the creator of the Mensa Norwaki test, I asked if Mensa includes impossible puzzles, and more specifically, specifically if he could explain the logic behind puzzle 31. In response, he said there are no impossible questions as these were removed during development. Analysis during development, internal consistency, shows that all items contribute to the final score in a meaningful way. Items that no one or all solves are typically removed as these do not discriminate slash contribute to the test. The pattern is as follows, striped plus stripes equals white, black plus black equals white, white plus black equals white, black plus white equals stripes, stripes plus black equals white, and black plus black equals striped. The answer is D. This is exactly the same as what the first comment on Stack Exchange said, but notice how it takes with additions from the rows as well. This means that I was correct about the assumption that the same rules applies in the rows and in the columns. Also, when I went through the comment on Stack Exchange, I already knew that this way of solving the puzzle was flawed. So I responded back, black plus black equals white and black plus black equals striped, which you mentioned in your comment. How can we have two different outcomes for the same adding? And finally, I got a satisfying ending to my attempts at solving puzzle 31. I thought I typed wrong, but you are completely right. I did a mistake. Somehow I didn't notice and nobody told me about this one until you asked. It's still possible to solve it, but this makes this item flawed nonetheless. I will find a replacement item and update the test as soon as possible. And here we have it, the replacement item of puzzle 31. For me personally, it was just satisfying getting an explanation for this puzzle and finally putting it behind me. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you again in the next puzzle.